welcome back to my channel. My name is Miranda. Today I thought I would do, it was going to be five books that changed my life fiction because I, I done a non-fiction video. It turned into more than five so we're just gonna roll with it. Also if you hear cats meowing, my cats are currently fighting so sorry but <laughs> it's two, four, six. Six of my favorite fiction books so far. There are so many more. Picking a favorite book is like picking a favorite child, but these are six of the ones that have stayed with me for a very long time. Like my taste has changed obviously since from when I was a preteen to a teenager to now as an adult, but these books have stayed as far as how they affect me, how I feel when I read them. I still love them and they still give me the feelings, all the good feelings when I read them. So let's get started. Number one, in no particular order, but number one is The Best of Me by Nicholas Sparks. Now, I will say, Nicholas Sparks books are very hit and miss with me, especially the new ones. I'm kind of the... they're not my favorite, but some of his older ones hit me hard. Honestly, The Notebook, both the book and the movie, are not really my favorites. The Best of Me wrecked me. I... <laughs> started reading this on a road trip. I kept reading it even when it got dark and I didn't have my book light with me and I sobbed in the back of a car reading this and I feel like that's all I have to say. I have not seen the movie because it stars James Marsden and I love him so much but I just know that it would like wreck me to watch the movie if reading the book brought me it's just too much so anyways this book follows amanda and dawson they fell in love when they were teens he's from a different path than she and they ultimately separate and then are brought back together when a man that mentored both of them passes away and like they get called together for the will reading because he did not have children and so then they reunite and it's basically it goes back and forth from them as teenagers to them in the current day with the will reading and everything and amazing chemistry just incredible highs incredible lows as per nicholas sparks usual if you want to cry there's a glare but if you want to cry read this book number two is <laughs> wow we're starting off with all of the tear jerkers didn't do that intentionally but number two is if he had been with me by laura nolan i read this when i was a teenager it is a young adult fiction book but holy cow this book too ruined me this came out or at least i found it about the time that the fault in our stars was like the thing and everybody was crying over the fault in our stars this book is so much more to me. No offense to John Green, but this book, there's no cancer in it. So, the, I mean, you got that. But basically, it follows Finn. Oh, goodness. I'm awful. I forgot the main character's name. It's told from her point of view, but it follows Finn and the main character. They have been friends since they were children. They live next door to each other, and it's just their love story, and it's so incredibly beautiful. It draws so much more feeling, and, like, I personally, I struggle connecting with couples. <laughs> I don't know if this is just me, but I struggle connecting with couples in, like, romantic books unless there is more of that, like, side, you know, the side. And it's not necessarily that has to be incredibly explicit or anything like that. It's just that I struggle with young adult fiction, even as a teenager, because it felt like I was seeing the very surface of the connection. I was not getting those deeper feelings and it led to me feeling disconnected. So when there was a conflict or a problem that I felt like I should be feeling deeper about, I didn't really feel it because there wasn't those deeper more intimate moments that I have could have connected to the characters more through if that makes sense so that being said this book was a young adult so obviously it's not too you know but Laura writes so incredibly well that I connected to their love I connected to their story and I felt every single thing that the main character felt and it was just and the ending I will never be so happily ruined by an ending 
And I know that, like, right now, Colleen Hoover's, like, the thing for, like, ruining you through books. I've not read Colleen Hoover yet, but this book ruined me in all the best ways. So, I recommend. Okay, number three is... Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. Now, I will say this. I found this when I was probably, like, 17. After reading more as an adult, it's not the best. I'm gonna just say it. It's not. Because I'll be honest. I feel like I just ruined it. But anyways, it has characters that are written so thoroughly that you can't help but connect to this book. It's kind of dramatic. The characters are a little immature and... Some of the plot points have not aged well as far as, like, they just haven't aged well. It's not incredibly offensive. The last time I read it, it's not offensive or anything like that, but they just kind of have been like, that wouldn't really be something today. Like, it's not as relatable, I guess is what I would say. But this was the first book that really gave me all corners, or at least, like, as much as you can, of a love from beginning to the end of the book. It really gives all facets. You get to see the evolution and the deepening of their connection. Travis and Abby are a great couple, kind of dysfunctional, but you still root for them. Abby is kind of the, she has like a little bit of like a troubled, darker past, but she is determined to start over, be buttoned up, be the good girl, do just focus on schoolwork. That's it. Travis is the quintessential bad boy. Every woman loves him. He has all of the things that a typical guy in college does. And he actually is an underground fighter. And that's how they meet is she gets dragged along to this underground fight and meets Travis. And it's just it the evolution of their relationship from reluctant friends to how they fell in love is just so good and I have yet to be able I'll think of like a scene do you ever do that where you think of a scene and you'll be like oh what book was that and you'll remember and then you'll sit down and you'll be like I want to read that scene and move on with your life this book I think of some of the scenes often and every time I have sat down to read just that scene I have ended up rereading the entire book and that's happened, I mean, that happened like a month ago and I read it and it gave me all the feelings. So really, really good. And I think pretty good character arcs. They both grow in and out of the relationship and it's just a satisfying book. It's a pretty light read. Like it's not super hard to read. Really, really good. Okay. The next one is The Age of Never by J.A. Redmersky. I think I got it at Costco. But I found it and it's great. So basically this follows Cam and Andrew. Cam and Andrew. And they meet on a Greyhound bus. She is trying to move on from her life and he is going to visit his dying father. And they basically meet, they connect, and it's the story of... It's the story of them. And what I love about this book is that... It very, it's dual perspective, which I sometimes love and I sometimes hate, and I like it in this because it very much considering it just, it, the way this writer writes, I feel like it's necessary to get the whole picture. Whereas like sometimes in f like first person, you don't necessarily need that other perspective because the way the writer writes, you can still kind of gauge where the other character's at through the writing. And I feel like this writer needed that dual perspective to really be able to fill in the scenery and just the entire story for us as the readers. So anyways, it's dual perspective. I really like that about it. I also really like that it's a push and pull romance. Normally don't like those. I'm a very impatient reader. I like to get to where they're just together and it's just happy and all of that. But this is a really well-written push pull where it's just you feel the tension you feel the want you feel the hesitation and it just draws you in and when they do finally get together spoiler there's still like they get together like here so there's still like a good bit of book and there's conflicts that you're surprised by but overall it felt gent like a genuine 
love story that I was reading. It was fairly realistic, at least to my perspective. You felt the characters' flaws and you felt why they loved each other. And it just felt like you were getting to know two very real people try to love each other in the midst of the chaos that is their life. And it was just so good. I will say there is a sequel to this. I don't think that was the intention for the writer to write a sequel when she wrote or they wrote this. I did buy it because I was like, yes, because I loved this couple so much. I bought it. I don't recommend the sequel. It just, I felt like this book and this couple was wrapped up quite well in this and I don't entirely remember 100% of the plot of that, but I remember reading it and it did kind of ruin this book for me. It's been a couple years now, so I actually just reread this in preparation because for this like idea of the books, my favorite books over time. And I was like, you know, it's been a while since I've read this and it's because the sequel kind of soured it for me, but I had forgotten most of the sequel. I reread it, this still stands. If you do read this and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a sequel. I'm sorry, but just don't get it. Just let them exist in this book and it's just great. So there you go. The Edge of Never. It's a good book. Okay. Fourth. Yes. Fifth. Fifth. I can count. Five is Faking It by Cora Carmack. It's part of the Losing It trilogy. Faking It, I believe, is number two. I could be wrong, but they can be read as standalone. It doesn't have to be read in a certain order or anything, but they're all part of like the same world. I do have losing it. It is right there. Nope. Nope. Right there. I did buy losing it first. I do like it. It's not my favorite and it's not part of this list for that reason. It's a good book. I kept it. I reread it every now and again, but it's kind of neither here nor there. This book is amazing. It follows Max and Cade. And Cade, you do meet in the first book, Losing It. But anyways, it follows Max and Cade. And basically, she wants it. She's the bad girl. She's edgy, rocker chick. And he's like the golden boy, as she calls him. Her parents basically show up unannounced. And she's at a coffee shop with her actual boyfriend, who is like, not who you want to introduce to your parents, basically. And she, they don't know her as like the grunge rock chick with the earrings and the tattoos and the crazy hair. They don't know her as that. And so she basically shoos him away and he happily goes and she spots Cade sitting alone in the coffee shop. It sounds very cliche as I'm saying it. It feels more organic in the book. But anyways, she spots him and goes and says, please play along. Her parents show up. He plays her fake boyfriend and for like that small amount of time, but he does such a good job that her parents want to meet more of him and they want to stay. And so he ends up having to do it for longer. And it's the story of how they get to know each other and how they realize that they're not that different from each other. And what I love about them is that they bring out different sides in each other. So like, yes, he's inherently like calm, cool, collected, has his stuff together, and she seems more chaotic, doesn't have it together, and she brings out the chaos in him in a good way. She kind of gives him permission to let loose and to not be perfect all the time, and he brings to her a sense of the fact that she doesn't have to be so chaotic and so unsure of herself basically they really find a way to balance each other out and it really feels like a yin yang relationship and just the chemistry between these two is one of my favorite things about this book well-written chemistry gives me like a ball in the middle of my gut I don't know how to quite describe it. It's a good thing. I get it with Beautiful Disaster as well, but this book, I get it even when there's not like a huge conflict. It just, I feel it. I feel their tension, their palpable energy together, and it's so well written, and this couple is just like goals. It's just so, so good, and it, I bought this book. I went into a Barnes & Noble because I had a couple hours to kill, and I picked up this book, and I sat down in the Barnes & Noble fully intending to read a little bit of it, put this back on the shelf, and leave. I just, that's what I was, I was borrowing a chair from them. And this book sucked me in so much that I ended up staying and I stayed for longer than I should have. 
all to end up buying the book. And I have reread it since. I reread it every Thanksgiving because it is based around Thanksgiving and that gives me my excuse to read it. I love it. It's just such a good book and it's a light read. You can read it and you can just feel all the feels and you can feel good and it ends on a happy note and you're just great. And so I recommend it. It's just really good. I also did read the book following this, Finding It. Again, that one's fine. It's honestly probably my least favorite. This one is definitely my favorite and yeah, I just, I love it. Also, Cade is boyfriend girls. It's just a fact. So, okay. Last, but again, not least is This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. This book is out of my normal realm for what I do like to read. I tend to like to read books that kind of fit under the faking it um, category of just like light romances. That's just kind of more what I like to sit down and read unless I'm reading like serious nonfiction. But this is how it always is, is I think an incredibly important book for anybody to read. And here's why. This book follows uh, the family of a little boy who decides that he wants to be a little girl. And so it follows the transition of Claude to Poppy. And Poppy is, I believe, like, oh goodness, I think six, like kind of in that range, age range, five to seven, somewhere in there during the transition. And the family moves to Seattle to because it's safer and it basically just follows the family. I believe there are five children, but there are multiple siblings. Poppy is the youngest and it's basically just the telling of the family and how they accommodate and how they help Poppy, how Poppy feels. And it's just the story of the transition of a trans person. And it's beautiful, it's insightful, and interwoven is stories that the father tells Poppy, the father's a writer, and it interweaves with the story, it's like with the book itself, but the stories within it are very cute, they're very insightful, and they just bring a whimsical note to it, and it just, you feel how much Poppy's father loves her. And it's just, it's complicated, it's messy, and it's every bit what you think a family of six or seven would feel like going through this. And it just is, again, it's incredibly important, I think, and it's very insightful, and it gives you feelings in a different way. It's not like, a, like again, it's not like a romance book that you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, they broke up. That sucks. It's very much you feel the discomfort of the newness of trying to find a new life in which the parents try to help their son transition to a daughter and how the siblings try to protect their sister from what Poppy is unable to comprehend at such a young age, but still like, Poppy doesn't understand why it's so hard for people to just accept that she's Poppy. Like, she was Claude, and now she's Poppy, and she and she doesn't quite understand why it's so hard for everybody else, and she recognizes how different it is for her parents and how hard it is for them to try and protect her, and she recognizes that they are trying to protect her, and so just feeling all of that love and the mistakes that are made in love and the right things that were done. It's just, it's so good. It's, and it's something that I would recommend to absolutely anybody to read. And that's just that. So anyways, those are my top five turn to six books that have stayed with me through the years. I obviously have favorites now that are different from this list, but these are the ones that have endured over time as my tastes have changed. These are still ones that I can easily pick up, read, and still get all the same feelings from. So I hope you liked it. If you've read any of them and you loved them, please let me know. If you read them and hated them, let me know. And yeah, so thanks for watching. Bye. Hey! Changed my life. I mean, like, he's such a dick. I can read this in one sitting. I mean, it's a little bit thicker, so it takes me like a couple hours, but... That's what you said. Oh, 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 oh,